Hey there everyone, this is a quick demo just to go through the 2D homing missiles assets um, that I've recently created for the Unity Asset Store. Um, what it is is basically a PID controlled homing missile asset that you can add to your 2D games um, and the way it works is through uh, translation of the missile sprites um, using the PID controller and that means that it, it basically doesn't use the any of the um, built-in physics engine it just um, uses the built-in algorithm to control the missile sprite and guide it towards its uh, target in a realistic manner so first things first uh, what I've done here is I've just set up a, a blank scene a new project set it up for the 2d defaults and what you'll need to do is just download the asset off the unity asset store and once you do that you'll get to this importing package screen where you just want to select all, all of the items and click on import so that'll bring it all into a 2d homing missiles uh, root folder in your assets directory as you can see there and the first thing that I just want to show you guys is the demo scene that's included with the asset uh, so to open up that just click on the demo scene folder and double click the scene file and I'm just going to quickly name my default scene at the okay so with the uh, example scene blank scene that we set up saved uh, the demo scene is now loaded and I'm just going to zoom out the scene so you can see it here it's just a simple background and a couple of items and a few homing missiles that have been added and I'm just going to go right ahead and play the scene so you can see how it looks so by default three missiles start off and just fire at the target and um, let's bring the width in there so if you click anywhere on the scene it will launch a missile wherever you click and the missile will automatically target the platform so I'm just going to launch a few guys just so you can see how they they work and you can see when when the platform avoids they basically swing around and, and aim towards the platform until they hit them these sliders allow you to adjust the missile performance you can see here they've got less of a swingy behavior more of a direct targeted behavior and speed now just by increasing those two values and that's just manipulating the two main properties on the PID controller the missile script so let's click stop on that and um, basically what we'll cover in this demo is creating the scene from scratch um, and it'll just show you the basics of how you can add the homing missiles into your own game um, and also how to create a basic uh, missile launcher script which you can obviously attach to your game objects in, in your game which will allow whatever objects you want to launch missiles dynamically from code okay so let's load up our example scene which was the empty scene we created earlier and we'll go through adding the missiles from scratch first thing I'll do is I'll create a target game object so just create an empty game object I'm going to name that target and I'm going to add a sprite renderer so we can actually see it and if I select the sprite here and go to assets you'll see that these are included with the asset package it's just a little space sort of platform circular platform object um, so I'm going to add that sprite and what we want next is we want a rigid body 2D and we also want a circle collider 2D so that the uh, missile can actually collide with this object what I'll do is I'll just set these settings on the rigid body down to zero and I'm also going to enable the collider as a trigger and the other thing I'm going to do is just go to my project settings go to physics and just take gravity off like that right so um, if I click play let's just have a quick look at that so it doesn't move that's great that's exactly what we want and what we'll do now is we can drop a an actual missile in right so for the missiles we've got a prefabs folder that's included with the the asset when you import it you'll see how it's just called homing missile um, if I drag and drop that into my scene hierarchy over there 
uh, let's zoom out a little bit, you'll see that it's added it over here. Now the way the missiles work is they really just need one item to get going and that is a target, a target game object. Um, they've got a, a little bit of a hierarchy to them, every missile. And if I expand it out here you'll see it's got a missile sprite and it's also got a smoke game object. And what that does, you'll see it there, the smoke object is essentially a particle system that leaves a smoke trail behind the missile and the missile sprite game object itself is really just a sprite renderer with the missile sprite itself and the homing missile uh, contains the missile controller script which is your main uh, PID missile controller and if I click the missile sprite you'll see there's also a missile cleanup script uh, that's optional and it's really just there to clean up the, uh, the missile nicely when it's destroyed or when it destroys another object and the reason being is if you just destroy the entire missile object, the homing missile itself, when it hits its target it'll instantly get rid of the smoke trail which is not what you want, you want to see the smoke sort of left behind so what this does is it uh, detaches all the children game objects and cleans them up after a few seconds so essentially it just leaves the, the smoke trail behind Right, so going back to the base homing missile itself, as I said earlier, we just need to assign a target. So to do that, just drag and drop your target onto the target property, and you'll see here some basic properties that control the missile performance in the PID controller are already assigned, and that's all you really need to do, and pretty much that, that should uh, launch the missile. So there we go you can see that it just flies straight to the target and hits it. Now obviously that's pretty boring, the target isn't moving, so we'll cover that next just to make our, our target move around a bit. So in order to make our target move we just need to use a couple of helper scripts that are also included in the asset download when you download it. And to find these just look in the demo scripts folder over here and you'll see there's a whole bunch of uh, different scripts that are used in the demo scene which we can just reuse here and what these will accomplish is to randomly move that space platform around the screen and then later on we'll also have a look at a simple missile launcher script which shows you how to instantiate missiles wherever you click your mouse and to launch them there. So to start off with what I'm going to do is just create an empty game object and I'm just going to call the central point and I'm going to position it at zero, zero. So if we have a look at that, you can see it's in the middle of the scene now. And what I'm going to do is let's just quickly find our random position mover script. That's the one that we want. So that's in your demo scripts folder. I'm going to drag and drop that onto the central point. And what the script does is it essentially just randomly picks a point um, from your reference point, and the reference point is going to be the central point game object itself, which is in the center. So I'm going to drag and drop that onto the central point object property, and I'm going to select a radius of 4, um, and I'm going to put the picker interval as 1, which is essentially 1 second. So the radius determines the, uh, the circle that's generated around the central point. When the scene starts, the central point is recorded, and what the script does is it randomly generates a point within that radius every one second. So if you change that you'll obviously get a new point every so often. Um, so the next thing that we want to do, actually let's just start this up now, and you can see how it will actually generate the point here. So you can see there the random point in the circle is changing every sort of one second. So the idea for that is that we're pretty much going to put a follow script onto our, tar onto our uh, target platform over here. So to do that you can drag and drop the demo follow script onto the target. If I highlight that now we'll see that the demo follow script's got a target property itself. So what we want to do is tell it to target the central point. So if I drag and drop that over there and we also need to assign a speed. So we'll just put 2 and we'll just put this boolean value should follow as true. Now what that's going to do is it should tell the targets to follow that central point every time it uh, generates a, a new position. 
and the target will lerp so it'll move and sort of slowly slow down towards that point as it arrives. So there we go, you can see now it's moving around randomly in that radius to random positions. So the missile will now try and track it wherever it goes, which makes our scene a little bit more interesting. So the next thing I want to show you guys is how to use a, a simple missile launching script. So this is probably the most interesting part because nobody wants to just drag and drop a missile into their scene and leave it to track its target and destroy itself. You want to be able to dynamically create missiles as you go along, uh, depending on your game logic. Um, and this missile launch script will show you the basics of how to do that. Now what it does do is it instantiates missiles wherever you click your mouse in the scene. Um, ideally if you're using a lot of missiles in, in your sort of final version of your game you don't want to be instantiating, it's not the best for performance. You want to use some sort of uh, object pool for that which pretty much just loads up a pool of missiles at the start of your game. Um, sets them to disabled and essentially whenever you need a missile you set it to enabled and position it where you want. Um, so I won't be going into that sort of level of depth in this uh, video demo. Uh, we'll just show you the basic instantiation of a missile wherever you click your mouse. So let's create an empty game object and uh, let's call this something like missile manager and we've got a demo scene manager script here, which essentially contains the logic for launching the missile. Um, I'm just going to drag and drop that onto a central point, and if we have a look at the script itself, we've got a few properties here, like max missiles. This just makes a maximum limit of missiles that you can have in the scene at any one point in time, and whenever the missiles are destroyed and removed, um, that there's a little bit of cleanup script inside this script that runs to clear out this missile collection list, which is where the uh, maximum missiles limit is enforced. So what we need to first of all do is assign a missile prefab. So to do that, let's go across to our prefabs, drag and drop our missile prefab onto it. And we've got a few other properties here that uh, work with the demo scene. Um, for now I think we'll just ignore those. Um, we might need to modify a few things for our script to, to work here, but uh, we'll get to that when the time comes. So there are probably a few things that we are going to have to modify in the, uh, in the demo scripts just to get it uh, to work properly, and that's just because we don't have some of the, the GUI text labels in the scene, things like that, so we'll just comment those out. So I've got the demo scene manager script loaded up in, in my IDE here. This might look a little bit different because I'm using Visual Studio. Uh, some people use the default mono develop that's included with Unity, um, but you can just ignore that. So what we want to do here is we're just going to comment out the GUI text labels and the items that update the text labels when you change the sliders in the script. So let's save that for now. Um, the other thing that the script does is it uh, instantiates random asteroids at the side of the scene and sends them flying along. It's just a visual thing, it doesn't really achieve much other than a bit of visual flair, so um, let's actually just go and add the prefab for the asteroid, which is also included in the assets, um, and assign it there, and we'll tick yes for spawn asteroids. These values here are just what we set up as the missile performance defaults, and whenever you launch a missile it sets those, uh, well, it actually just sets those properties up when it starts the scene. Um, and if you change the sliders at the top um, of the scene when, when the game is running, the, those sliders will update those values and any new missiles that are launched after that will Alright, so at this point um, we've pretty much got our demo scene manager, or otherwise known as our missile launcher script, uh, set up. Uh, one thing to just make sure is we've got a homing missile prefab selected there. Somehow I lost that. Um, so let's quickly go through the actual missile launching script. So I've loaded up in Visual Studio again here, 
and at the very top we've just got all our public fields set up so that you can adjust the values in the editor, drag and drop your prefabs on and you'll see here in the start method we uh, if the boolean value for spawn asteroids is on we just invoke the spawn asteroid method to repeat every one second and all that does is send some asteroids across the screen those asteroids have a basic moving and rotation script on which, which allows them to move across um, and then we've got our sliders that allow us to adjust the two float values for the missile performance properties and in the update loop we look for a mouse click if we find a mouse click, what we do is we find all game objects in the scene that have the targets tag set and we put that into an array of game objects and we convert that to a list. We then get the click position, we convert that to a world point uh, based on the mouse position passed in as a parameter and based on the counts or the, the size of the uh, list as long as that's less than the maximum number of missiles, which by default is 10, we then basically launch a missile. And we do that by instantiating the missile prefab over here on this line. We pass in the click position, and I've hard coded in a, a Z value of negative 3 there, just because of the, um, the way the sprite layering is lost in a in an Unity asset that you export in version 4.3. It's a bit of a bug. So what that means is the um, if I had to use the normal 2D sprite uh, rendering orders and layers, you would basically lose that. And when you guys downloaded the asset, the layering wouldn't work properly. So I've just bypassed that by hard coding Z values in to do the, the sprite layering orders in, in the demo scene. Um, so that's the only reason I use that here. Um, then what we do is we grab a, a reference to the missile controller script and we know that a missile prefab's always got a missile controller script on it so we use kit components to grab that and um, we set the two main uh, properties for the, the PID controller which is the proportional constants and the max speed we set those to whatever the slider value is at the time and we also set the targets of the missile controller script uh, to grab a random item from the targets array and in our case we've only got one space platform so it's always going to be the same item that gets targeted and what we do is we add the missile to the list um, over here and then afterwards we just do a for loop that runs through and whenever a missile is destroyed it becomes null in the list so what this little for loop does here is it looks for any object in the, in the list collection that's null and if it is null it then just removes it so it just cleans it up and allows you to add more missiles in um, that's essentially it and if I switch back to unity here one other thing I'd like to just point out is every uh, missile has got the an explosion prefab property and by default I include a, a basic um, particle effects very simple explosion particle effect that just uses unity standard assets um, if you don't set the explosion prefab, it's fine. The uh, missile controller script won't actually um, try and and destroy. When it does destroy the missile, it won't inst try and instantiate anything. It'll just bypass that, so that's fine. Um, and lastly, we've also got this destroy target on collision boolean value on the missile controller script. If you enable that and play the scene you'll see that it'll destroy the targeted cloud with. so that's all that that one does so if we take that off let's just try that out again now whenever we launch missiles you can see how the uh, demo script uh, just instantiates them at the click position if we adjust these sliders it'll adjust the performance of the missiles accordingly